You may be writing your neurology boards or preparing for your Royal College exams. It may just be an internal OSCE exams. Regardless, there are some EG patterns that you really need to recognize. You have to recognize those patterns to do well in your examinations. So what I'm going to do in the next 10 to 15 minutes is go through some of the common EG patterns. This is not exhaustive. These are just few examples and I hope this helps you with your exams. So let's get started. So triphasic waves, as you can identify here, uh, let's go through some basics. So all the odd numbers on these uh, cables represent EG activity from the left hemisphere. The even numbers represent electrical activity from the right hemisphere and the electrodes basically tell you the location of these electrodes. For more details about these montages and the labeling, you can go through some of my earlier tutorials. So triphasic waves are called triphasic because these have three phases. You can look over here. This is the first phase. This is the second phase. This is the third phase. Typically, the, you will see that these are symmetrically distributed, so these are symmetrical between the two hemispheres. In some patients, you will be able to identify an anterior to posterior lag. What that means is basically if you look at the apex of these triphasic waves in the most anterior channel, let's say here, and then move more posteriorly, you see a lag between the apex of uh, these triphasic waves. Triphasic waves can be seen in a number of encephalopathies, the common ones being hepatic encephalopathy. You can see these in uremia. You can see these in CO2 retention. You can sometimes see these in lithium toxicity. So there are different causes that gives you triphasic waves. You can see triphasic waves even as a part of an electrographic seizure. But what you need to differentiate is whether this is more of a metabolic encephalopathy or someone in non-convulsive status epilepticus. With experience, you will be able to differentiate one from the other. And uh, so basically, go and read through the books about triphasic waves. Burst suppression pattern. Why is it called burst suppression? Because of the picture that you see on the on the slide here. So this is period of suppression where amplitudes of the EEG are even less than 5 microvolts here. Then there is this period of a burst of activity. This, In this case it lasts 2 seconds. Then you have some suppression, then another burst. So if you watch this whole EEG, there is a burst suppression pattern. When you're reporting a burst suppression pattern on the EEG, you have to identify, so the way I would say it is, the bursts last anywhere from 2 to 10 seconds and the periods of suppression last from 5 to 10 seconds. Burst suppression can be chemically induced, so in patients who are in status epilepticus, sometimes they will be given medications that will produce this pattern, so high doses of propofol, pentobarbital, or other benzodiazepines even general anesthetics can lead into this burst suppression pattern. So if it is chemically induced, it does not necess necessarily tells you of a poor prognosis. But if you see a burst suppression pattern in certain conditions, such as a severe anoxic brain injury, in the absence of any medications, then it tells you of a poor prognosis for functional recovery. Likewise, in a syndrome called Otahara syndrome, if you see a burst suppression pattern, that basically tells you of a relatively poor prognosis. But before making any prognostic, prognostic determinations, the patients need to see a neurologist or a pediatric neurologist, somebody who is an expert in this area. So alpha coma is basically a patient who is comatose and you see alpha frequencies throughout the EG. The term alpha coma is reserved when no other medications are being given. So if a patient is put in coma from the infusion of propofol, I will not really call it an alpha coma. So alpha coma has alpha frequencies in a comatose patients 
with no anterior to posterior differentiation. So in a normal EEG, you see alpha frequencies in the occipital head region. So alpha frequencies get more prominent when a person closes the eyes and less prominent attenuates when a person opens the eyes. In a state of alpha coma, you see alpha frequency both anteriorly and posteriorly and this does not react to external stimulation. This does not react to painful stimulation. 3 per second spike and wave is a pattern, so it's called 3 per second. So these green lines are separated by 1 second each, and in each second you see approximately 3 spikes and 3 waves. So that's the reason it's called 3 per second spike and wave discharges. This is a typical pattern that you see in childhood absence epilepsy, patients who have childhood absence seizures can space out only for a few seconds, typically 3 to 5 seconds or 5 to 10 seconds. There is not a significant post-ictal confusion or disorientation and these need to be differentiated from complex partial seizures as we've done in our previous tutorial. Hips arrhythmia basically is a disorganized pattern. So in a normal EG, if you look at the EG, you can say, even without looking at the montage, you are able to say whether this is anterior or posterior activity from anterior or posterior leads. But in a hips arrhythmic EG, basically this EG is disorganized, so you cannot state the anterior or posterior uh, pattern. The second thing is, this is high amplitude slowing, so you see a lot of delta activity, you see some superimposed beta frequencies, you see some theta frequencies, so it's high amplitude, disorganized, with multifocal sharp waves, so you have one sharp wave in F3, then another in FP2, so multifocal basically means in three or more non uh, contiguous areas, so three or more separated areas, you see sharp waves. So this is multifocal sharp waves, high amplitude, disorganized EEG uh, can be associated with in patients with infantile spasms. So plates are periodic lateralized epileptiform discharges. So in this case, you are able to identify plates here. So if you look on the right temporal region, these are pleds. Although these are periodic, the periodicity is not every one second or every two seconds. So a better term would be quasi-periodic. So these are periodic discharges. These are lateralized. If you see uh, pleds in a patient who has disorientation or confused or new onset seizure, you want to make sure you rule out herpes encephalitis, so make sure a spinal tap has been done and herpes encephalitis has been ruled out. But plates are not pathognomic for herpes encephalitis. If you see plates, you should also look for some other acute or subacute structural abnormalities, basically meaning getting an MRI of the brain or a CT scan of the brain just make sure that you're not miss, missing any structural abnormality. MRI is preferable to CT scans. The other thing to consider is patients who have plates are at a high, relatively higher risk of having seizures. In some of the studies, as many as 70% of patients who have plates, if their EEG is recorded for 24 hours, show some form of seizures. So that is something to keep in mind. Whether you treat that or not will be totally dependent on what upon the recommendation of the neurologist. Then sleep spindles, I mean, everything before the slide, what we looked at on this uh, presentation was abnormal, but sleep spindles are normal. So when you see sleep spindles, so these discharges, these are high frequency, beta, alpha to beta frequency discharges seen in the frontal central head region, these are these are basically diagnostic of uh, stage 2 sleep. So if you see sleep spindles, patient is in stage 2 sleep. Uh, just uh, coincidentally, you also see vertex waves. So these are vertex waves and these are sleep spindles. So patient is in stage 2 sleep. So focal sharp waves, what you where you see the sharp waves are basically in the left zygomatic and left temporal head region and you also see sh some sharps in the right temporal. It's not clear. You may be picking some ECG artifact on the right side, 
but these are sharp waves on the left side. So the left temporal sharp waves, you also have focal slowing in the left temporal head region. So this may be suggestive of an underlying structural abnormality in the left temporal head region. The focal sharp waves are suggestive of an increased risk of seizure onset from this location. Uh, this is an average reference montage. You can look at these on an average reference montage or you can also review it in a bipolar montage. And this is FERDA, which stands for Frontal Intermittent Rhythmic Delta Activity. So it is in the frontal head region. It has a rhythmicity. It occurs. It is continuous and it is rhythmic and you see it in the frontal head region. FERDA should be differentiated from eye blinks, so you can put an electrooculogram where you put some extra electrodes around the uh, around the globe. Uh, in uh, eye blinks, you will not see the slowing in more posterior leads. In FERDA, uh, you see that it is not just the FP1, which is the frontopolar electrode. You also see it in the F3 uh, head region. FERDA can be seen in different types of encephalopathies. It was previously attributed to midline structural abnormalities such as thalamic infarctions, but this is a pattern which is non-specific, should not be associated with a specific etiology, and uh, you need to recognize that these are not eye blinks, but an abnormal EG related to the rhythmic delta activity. And the pattern here is generalized spike and wave and poly spike and wave discharges. If you compare this with our one of the earlier slides which demonstrated three per second spike and wave, this is more irregular. This is not three, it is four to six, so you can count one, two, three, four. It is poly spikes. If you look more closely, you see multi spikes in a single discharge. So this is a pattern that is often seen in association with juvenile myoclonic epilepsy. Well, folks, this is pretty much it for today. Uh, I will discuss some other common EG patterns in comatose patients in one of the future uh, presentation. So good luck with your exams. Bye for now.